In this video, we're going to continue with strings and we're going to cover indexing. So we've talked a lot about indexing and I kept on saying we're going to learn about this later or that time is now. And what's cool about indexing is that you can go forwards and backwards. And we're also going to cover slicing. So slicing is traversing from one section of a string to another section of the string. And you can also do that forwards and backwards. So without further ado, let's get started. You can index strings to grab one character from a string of characters. To do this, you'll need something called a zero-based index, meaning we start counting from zero. The main difference between Excel and Python when working with a table is that Excel starts with a one. So the first row is going to be one. In Python, it's zero-based index. So when you're working with pandas and you're using a data frame, which is the Python equivalent of a table, you're going to see that the first record is going to start with a zero. So you want to keep that in mind. So let's go through this together. The first character of the string sequence, Jonathan, is J. And that's because we have this zero is assigned to J, and then it keeps going in sequence. And so it seems pretty straightforward. So if you wanted to return the second element, you would use one and not two. And that's where the confusion comes in. But once you get over that, it's pretty straightforward. So let's dive into this code example. And let's grab the first element of Jonathan. So first, we're going to create the string Jonathan. And we're going to use indexing. And the way that that works is with brackets. And if I add 0, that's how you tell Python that you want the first element. So let's return this and we should expect J because J is the first element. OK, we get J as expected. So let's continue with the second element. So we're going to write the same string. We're going to use the brackets and we're going to say, give us the second element, which is actually one, zero, one. Cool. And so we get O. And finally, we want to index the last element. <laughs> so let's keep on looking at this Jonathan up here. That's uh, with the index right below. So we want seven. So again, we're going to type my name. And you can type your name. I just You can use any string that you like. So here we're going to use seven. And then that should be N. And we get an N. So that's great. So you can also index variables if they're assigned to strings. There's literally no difference. So let's create or store Jonathan, and you can use any string that you like. It can be your name. So I'm just going to create a name, and then you insert any name that you want here. I'm just going to use my name, Jonathan, and we can access certain elements from the name variable, just like we did with the string. And actually, it's a little bit more common. So let's go ahead and grab what the first element. Okay, so try to guess what that might be. Yep, and it's zero. We return that and we get J. And so you could do this with the same example. If you wanted to get the last element, you could do seven. That would give us the N for at the very end. However, you could also use negative one. Whoop, not the correct character there, negative one. And you would also get N. So that might be a little bit confusing. And that's what we're going to talk about down here where you can actually use negative index. So here is, is the negative index visualized. And we're just going in this direction now. So instead of going this way when you're dealing with uh, positive numbers, negative numbers goes the opposite direction. So the last element is going to be negative 1. And then the first element is now going to be negative uh, 8. And you might be asking yourself, why do this? Why That seems so confusing. And it is. And it doesn't really make sense at this stage in programming. And I totally agree. However, whenever you get into slicing or if you have a list that's like an extremely large amount of characters or you're working with lists that contain many, many, many elements, like thousands of elements, or maybe millions of elements, how about if you want the last one? the negative one kind of makes sense, right? And that's what we're getting at. Just give me the last one, whatever the last one is. And that's very, very useful. So let's try it out. So how do you access the last element? Um, let's create a variable. Um, 
well, we already created name, so let's just go ahead and use name. So we're going to use name, and we're going to use negative 1, like we did before, and we get n. Okay, so now we want to access the penultimate, so the one before the last, and that would be negative 2, right? So that would be a. And that's pretty straightforward. However, this becomes, and this will make a little more sense when we're talking about slicing strings. But first, what is slicing strings? So you can specify a start, stop, and step parameter. And the third parameter is optional for the step. So what do I mean by this? Well, let's go ahead and slice. Um, let me just copy this. And we're going to slice this. And we're going to slice name. And we want to slice from 0 to 3, not including 3. I'll explain what that means through this example. So I want to start at 0, and I want to slice up to 3, but not including 3. And that's what 3 does. 3 is non-inclusive. And let me explain how this works. Let's run this first. OK, Google, I'm not a robot. Thank you for asking. OK, I'm going to run this cell. And J-O-N, John. So the first three letters. And the reason for that is pretty simple. This would be 0 right here. And as you continue, we're going 0, 1, 2, and 3. So 3 is not inclusive. So that's why it's J-O-N, not J-O-N-A. So this just tells you where to start and then where to stop. But it's non-inclusive. So it's not going to count that 3. So if you wanted to J-O-N-A, well, you just add one more here. And then you get J-O-N-A. So just remember that it's non-inclusive. Go back to where we were. OK. So the third parameter is specifies a step, which is optional. So let's go ahead and slice name. So we already have that variable listed for us. Let's create it here. And we're going to slice 0 through 8, not including 8, and steps of 2. All right? So you probably can figure this out. So let's go ahead and do this together. I'll let you get a head start. All right. So let's talk about this. So this is where I'm starting. This is where I'm going to stop, but not including 8. So it's going to go to 7. And we're going to move in steps of two. So J, skip O, go to N, skip A, so on and so forth. Let's try it out. So I'm going to run this cell. And that's exactly what I get. So I don't go all the way to the end. And I'm moving in steps of two. OK. And so this might be useful depending on how do you need to manipulate data. So let's move on to the last example. To reverse a string, you don't specify the start and stop parameters and enter negative 1 to start at the end and stop at the beginning. This seems really easy, but it's actually complicated to explain what's happening behind the scenes. So if you ever need to reverse a string, this is a good way to do it. We're going to talk about reversing lists when we get to collections. So just know that if you ever need to reverse a string, this is one way to do it. So we take name, and we're not going to specify the start. We're not going to specify the stop, and we're just going to say negative 1. And you get a string that is reversed. OK, so we talked about slicing and indexing, going forwards and going backwards. This is going to be something that's going to translate to lists when we get into collections. So right now, we're dealing with a collection of characters, which is a string, a string of characters. And you can actually traverse them through slicing and through indexing. But you can also do the same with collections. You can say, give me the second item to the fifth item. So there's a little bit of uh, overlap. So it's kind of nice that you can use the same indexing concept on strings and collections, such as lists. I hope this has been informative, and I'd like to thank you for watching.